Yeah, my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. You coming out? One hell of a fucking story. So stay tuned. This is Clinton Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's the week before, the big fight week. I'm joined by Michaela Mayer. Is it Mayer or Maya? It's Mayer, and you can tell this to Coach Al too, because to this day, he still calls me Michaela Myers, and it's Mayer, singular, no S. Well, like Mike Myers. No, no. Mayer. No, Mayer. no I said that you're, the guy calls you Myers uh, with yeah, an S. Yeah, 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 no, singular, no S. Okay. <laughs> Mayer. How are you? Doing great. Um, been here for a couple of days now. We came out a bit early, but I've surprisingly slept through the night, like 10 hours every night, so I don't even feel the jet lag. I'm good to go. So I'm assuming you've kind of, I saw you actually, as I checked out of this hotel, you were checking in and 14 days out from a fight. Is that normal for you? Well, bearing in mind, most of your fights have not really been, we've been in America, so, uh, but is that a normal thing? Um, no, obviously, I mean, I've traveled around when I was competing with Team USA, um, but I haven't done that since I turned pro. All my fights have been domestic in the United States, so um, there's a few reasons why I wanted to come out. Obviously, there was a lot of media that we wanted to get done, and we didn't want to cram it in on fight week, and we're, you know, trying to zone in and focus. And uh, Also, the, there's weight requirements for the UK that aren't in the U.S., and so I wanted to make sure I had plenty of time to shake that plane weight. You know, when you're sitting on a plane for 10, 12 hours, um, sets you behind a little bit. So I wanted to get here a couple of days to take care of that and just acclimate and get used to the environment. And yeah, I'm glad we did, though. I feel good. The biggest surprise when this fight was announced is that it wasn't headlining its own show because when we look at the main event, your fight with uh, Alicia is also a main event. So... Um, were you happy to kind of almost play a little bit of second fiddle, as we'd say in the UK, to Shields and Marshall? Um, I absolutely had a say when it came to doing this, right? And I'm excited about it. I think it's awesome. I think it's unique. I think it's never done before. And I was very on board with it. And my biggest thing to me, like, if, if, if I don't care, like, nobody else should care because this, is done, this was done for, to me for the fans. I thought this could be a one-stop shop. Um, for the fans to see two iconic fights, and I was hoping that they would put it, make it an all-female card at the end of the day, which they did. So it all worked out great. Um, I'm really excited about it. I think this is maybe the only time in my career I'll ever get to do something like this, and so I'm just embracing it. I get to be on the card with my two Olympic sisters who I went to Rio with, so that's really exciting also, and I think it's awesome. I mean, the only two things that mattered to me were one, my pay, and two, that the world was going to be watching and the world was going to see it. And my pay was negotiated before we decided to join cards with Shields Marshall, and people are definitely going to be tuned in. This makes it even more exciting. So I'm good. I think it's great. As much as people have embraced women's boxing, and rightfully so with some of the fights that we've seen and the caliber of fighters that we have seen over the last sort of four or five years, um, to have a card solely with women on it is not a known thing, especially here in the UK. It's the first time it's ever been done, uh, from your fight to Shields Marshall to the, to the rest of the undercard fights. Everyone, if you didn't already know, uh, will be a female on, on the card, which is history making as well. So to be a part of that, like you said, that's something special. Exactly. That's, I'm so glad they decided to do that. I was secretly hoping that they would do that, you know, um, and just go ahead and continue because you already have plenty of support for this, car this card, right? I mean, Shields Marshall could have stood alone, me and Baumgartner could have stood alone, and now you have both of us together on one card. And so why not now bring up the next generation of young women and put them on the card too and give them that exposure? I feel like young men in this sport have that opportunity all the time. Oh, we're going to put you on this guy's card. We're going to put you on this champion's card. And they have this this like platform that's already established for them that they can kind of pop onto the scene and, and showcase their skills. And so I feel like me and Clarissa are providing that now for another the next generation of young women, you know? And so um, this is just the natural progression of where women's boxing is going. And yeah, it's great for the sport. 
I think when fight week approaches kind of um, in a few days next week, we'll kind of see the scope of how much of a bold move this was from kind of boxer and Sky Sports, etc., to do this because I think that the idea behind it is great and uh, to have an all-female card. The reality, we're going to see next week exactly whether it was kind of a, wo a working formula. Well, I mean, what do you think? We put a, if we put a guy on the car that it would have sold uh, much better? Like, I just don't see that. Like, I, I think it was a very calculated, smart risk, if you want to call it. I don't think it's a risk at all. I mean, you have two awesome world title unification fights on there. So I don't think having a man on this card would have done us any different. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I think well, you took that. You got you, no. I'm not going to edit nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. What I meant was, <coughs> the idea behind it, yeah. an all-female card, is yeah. it, I think is brilliant. Yeah. But we're going to see the reality of it with the the perception from the public and kind of the reaction next week to kind of hopefully cement that, if that makes sense. I didn't mean yeah. putting like a random man on the card, <laughs> by the way, Michaela. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you think about it, most cards, even the men, the men don't really do this either, right? You have, you go for the main event, and then the undercard is just sort of stacked with up-and-coming talent that you're not really there for. You're there for the main event. So I think this is sort of setting a new tone for boxing, where we have two very, very high-end world title fights on this card that are supporting each other and um, helping to bring in the fans and... So, yeah, I think it's sort of new and different, but I think it's definitely going to catch on. People are going to be like, okay, wow, that was a sellout. That was great. Um, yeah, I think they're going to love it. I think so as well, <laughs> just so we got that clear. God, <laughs> it's not even fight week yet. Um, okay, you and Alicia Baumgardner. For people that don't know, can you give us kind of a loose context of without going into everything, because I know there's been a lot of back and forth over the last however, however long. But can you just give people kind of a little bit of context for people that don't know ahead of next week where it all kind of started from? Yeah, it's simple. It doesn't, that does not take long to explain. I was building a fight with Terry Harper for years. I was going at her, trying to get that fight made. I wanted to unify um, because I'm a champion and I want to fight the best and I want to put on the biggest fights possible. And so when she wouldn't give me the fight, she instead gave it to Alicia Baumgartner and Alicia knocks her out. So naturally, I'm going to turn my attention towards Alicia Baumgartner because once again, I'm a champion. I want to fight the best. I want to make the biggest fights made. I want to get the biggest fights made and I want to go undisputed. So I started coming for her. She, on the other hand, took it personally that I was just a real life hater and she was going to enjoy her bell and I was going to have to wait and blah, blah. But that's not the case. I'm a champion. I want to fight, and I want to become undisputed. So it was just a natural transition for me to start calling out Baumgartner and trying to make that fight happen. I think some people get confused because they think that the reason why someone wants to fight someone is because it's some sort of personal thing towards them. But really, it's about who's got the belt the majority of the time, and this is the case in this situation. It became personal because she took it personally. But... Um, you know, what kind of champion would I be if I was talking about being undisputed but not actually going for the fights to make me undisputed? Um, and so I'm proud that I got this fight done um, for the fans. In like six months after she became champion, this fight was announced. So, yeah, did it for the fans. Were you surprised with not just the win but the performance by Baumgartner over Terry Harper? Um, you know, she did her thing. I have nothing bad to say about that fight. She went in there as a challenger. Um, they probably underestimated her a little bit. I know that Terry Harper had just come off of a year layoff from a broken hand and blah, blah, blah. I don't think that was probably the fight to take. Um, I did think Terry Harper was going to do better than she did in that fight. Um, but looking at, you know, in hindsight, looking at everything that she had gone through, you know, with the, with the injury and the layoff and... You know, see now that she's all the way up to 154 or something like that. Obviously, the weight was an issue for her. Um, but regardless, no excuses. Baumgartner went in there and she did what she had to do. So she has the belt now. And, yeah, nothing you can say about that. It is what it is. That's what happens. As you well know, Terry Harper will now challenge Hannah Rankin uh, in Nottingham uh, this month, actually, in about three weeks' time. Uh, what do you think about that fight? I don't know. You know, I... 
I, I haven't seen Terry up at this weight. Um, you know, she, coming from a lighter weight, I think that she probably thro poses a little bit of a threat when it comes to um, work rate and punch count. You know, coming from the lighter weights, you're just used to like you're used to more you know a higher work rate. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how she adapts to this weight and um, how she looks. And I don't know. Coming off a loss too, like that, you just gotta. I have no idea. We'll see. I'm not. I'm literally not worried about it right now. <laughs> Your focus, obviously, on the um, the fight next week at the O2, and um, yeah, um, style-wise, do you think the styles are going to gel between you and Alicia? The what? The styles. Oh, styles. Styles. Um, yeah. So it's no secret that Alicia is a boxer. I mean, she's a counter puncher to me. From what I've studied her, she's a counter puncher, right? She wants to. She wants to keep that space. She wants to stay in that zone where she can sort of just catch you with that right hand coming in. Um, if the opponent, her opponent doesn't press her, she's not going to really press them back. She likes to keep um, just in that perfect range, um, in that distance where she can counter. And so um, you guys have seen my style. You know me. Like, I, I don't sit back and I don't wait. And I'm not a counter puncher. I'm, I'm, I'm going to press the fight. That's... That's, I'm the dog in this fight, right? She knows it. I know it. Uh, so I'm going to press the pace in this fight, and we'll see if she can handle that. We'll see if she's ready for that, if she's trained for that, if she's adjusted, um, because I'm not going to let her just sit on the outside and pick me. That's, that's never going to happen. I'm a better boxer, and I'm a better fighter. From her wins since she turned pro, I think the same year as you back in 2017, what, what win or performance have you been most impressed with with Alicia? Well, obviously her her win over Terry Harper was like is literally her only accomplishment in whatever twenty years of boxing. She started boxing when she was eight years old and that's the only thing that she's accomplished. I mean this girl has 170 amateur fights, something crazy like that. I've never seen her at one single tournament in the amateurs. Maybe she was there, but she lost early on. She was never on the national team. I, I mean, I didn't start boxing until I was 18. This girl had a decade on me. So I don't know what she's been doing. I think she was just bullshitting. That's what I think. I think that I was hustling and I was working and I was grinding and she was just bullshitting, just coasting her way through a career like she coasted her way through the Matisse fight. And now she's levels behind and she's going to have to play catch up. And do you think that will become apparent come next Saturday when she steps in the ring with you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, unless she's done some magical things in this training camp. But, you know, once again, she's kind of a new team, a new situation. She was over in Colorado training in my city, which to me just shows that she still doesn't know what her training camp looks like. She doesn't know what her team looks like. Um, she's still learning. She's still in those, like, developmental stages. Um, where she's with a new coach, she's in training in a new city. Like, I don't know what she's doing, but I don't see her having the structure to have made these, these changes and these adjustments that she's going to need when I take her into deep waters because that's where the fight is going to go. That's my style. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if she can handle it. She couldn't handle it against, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Lenardo too. Christina yeah. Lenardo too. She couldn't handle it there. I know that was a while ago, but has she, has she had the fights to challenge her and make her better? I don't think so. So we'll see. We'll see what she's been doing in the gym. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's not even fight week. That's what I keep thinking. We're like we're we're not. We're about four days away from fight week. But um, yeah, coming to the UK. Obviously, um, we know you've been here before, etc. Um, so. Slightly new, but not new experience for you. But to fight here at the O2 as well, which is just across the road here, yeah. um, it'll be good. It'll be some experience. Yeah, no, I'm really excited about it. I mean, I've come out to the UK a few times in the last couple of years, been doing some commentating for Sky Sports too. So it's been fun. I mean, it's just different here. It's different here in the U than in the US. It's, it's a really tough market in the US. One, we're just huge, right? So a lot bigger than the UK. And there's just so much competition for the media's attention. I've said this over and over again. Um, so it's a challenge. It's a challenge that I'm up for. I'm still, I'm still working on it. We're still trying to break down those barriers in the United States. But I'd be stupid to not come over here and sort of tap into the market that's already established and um, to the fans that are so open and welcoming and 
you know, ready to ride for us. So, uh, yeah. I'm assuming, like I said, about uh, what eight, nine days out from your fight, that you're going to be put through kind of a, a heavy media schedule as well. Like you're probably going to be pulled here and there, something that you're kind of used to, but at the same time, at this scope, at this kind of the level of the fight you're having with Alicia, um, you're going to embrace that? Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons, you know, I came out a little bit early. We're spreading out some of the media, um, so I'm not all crammed in. But listen, I still got Coach Al breathing down my neck. Uh, there's nothing changing just because media wants to do an interview. He's very old school. Everything is, you know, by the book. We don't change things, and so he won't allow for that. Uh, I got to make sure that we, we choose wisely and training comes first. Absolutely. Let me ask you about the main event because I know obviously you're – very close with Clarissa Shields. This has been a fight that's been, I suppose, on the scope since their, their amateur fight, which obviously is, was in Savannah's favor however many years ago. But this is uh, an elite fight at the, the very highest level, not just in women's boxing, but in, in boxing in general. But I'm assuming you're gonna back uh, the quote in her words in Clarissa Shields in this fight. Yep, Clarissa Shield is my Olympic sister. You know, I'll always have her back. I'm always going to be Team Clarissa, and I and I, I genuinely do believe that she will come on come out on top on the 10th. Um, and nothing against Savannah. I, I think Savannah's a great fighter too. She's learned to be. She's proven to be a great pro. Um, proven to have some power. Uh, but Clarissa's work rate and her intensity. Um, it's kind of I guess similar to Mia Baumgartner, right? Like, is I don't think that Clarissa is going to let Savannah get set to really drop that, those big shots in. And um, a, a puncher like that, you have to let them get set. So uh, we're just not gonna allow it. I can't wait for this fight week because I think <laughs> aside from even the build up when it starts up between you and Alicia, obviously we're gonna see uh, Savannah and Clarissa who clearly don't like each other. Um, so we're gonna see an interesting fight week in terms of the build up. But I suppose all that stuff doesn't really matter. It does, what does matter is what happens next Saturday uh, here at the O2. Yeah, so, you know, it matters to an extent because I think that this is obviously one of the greatest era of women's boxing so far. You know, we're really making strides and in, in growing, growing our sport and growing our place in the sport. And what we really needed is rival rivalries. We need those rivalries that the men have because at the end of the day, this is entertainment. And we're, we're putting on entertainment for the fans. So um, the rivalries are important. The buildups are important. But obviously for us as a fighter, the most important thing is going in there and sticking to the game plan and being disciplined through those 10 rounds. So that's my main focus. The buildup's almost over. We did our job there. I think we sold this card really well. It's going to be exciting. And I have, I, it'll live up. It'll live up to the hype. I definitely believe that. I think that as well. Um, right, let's move out of your your zone of fighting so you can kind of, you got a bit aggressive at some Sorry. parts of this. <laughs> I was like looking you dead in the eye. <laughs> uh, did you watch any of the, the influencer show that was here at the, the O2 last week? What is your thoughts on this whole kind of, it's not a new wave because it's been happening for the last three years, but any thoughts on kind of that whole concept? I'd like to consider myself a progressive thinker. This is just the the new day and age like this it is what it is with social media and you know, YouTube and everything that you have um, it's a whole new way to market your brand and sell yourself so the people who have capitalized on it you can't hate on them for that right that's just their hustle it's working for them they're making money so I think as long as you're talking about boxing we're all winning because people will say for a while that boxing was a dying sport I don't believe it was but I think it's definitely back with vengeance I think that it's one of the top sports being talked about in the world right now. And so um, that's all that matters to me. Keep talking, keep, keep showing up for these fights. I, I don't really care. Uh, I don't think it's doing any harm. If anything, it's just, you know, getting our sport out there. All publicity is good publicity. Yeah, I guess you could, I guess you could say that about this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's, there's real boxing fans and then there's sort of the fans that are jumping on because of this YouTube and this social media stuff, but it's just another demographic. Like to me, it's just another demographic of fans that we can potentially reel in that can become real fight fans. So yeah, I'm looking at the positive in it. I think it did well there. Um, okay. Do you know what day it is today? September 1st. No, like, you know, in England, we have these like made up holidays. Do you know? No idea. National Song Day today. Do you know that? National Song Day? Yeah, National Song Day. Oh, God. Yeah, National Song Day. So 
basically everyone we interview this week has to do a little bit to contribute to National Song Day. It's for the kids, so we can't obviously say no. Um, yeah, you've got to give like two verses of your favourite song and then that contributes to helping the kids. I hate you. <laughs> no, seriously, I'll Google it right now. If you hold the mic, well, I'll Google it. Oh my God, it's a thing. National Song Day, September the 1st, traditionally uh, a UK phenomenon. Okay, so two verses of any song you want, doesn't matter. You can go as loud or as quiet as you want, but it's, it's for the kids, so, you know. Okay. Okay, like I said, um, it's uh, for a good cause. It's doing help and spreading joy around the world, so two verses, that's all we ask. Ready? <clears throat> Colors of the world, spice up your life, every boy and every girl, spice up your life. People of the world, spice up your life. Ah, stomach to the left, if you're having a good time, shake it to the right, if you know that you feel fine, shake it to the front, ha, ha, oh, why? Stomach to the left, if you're having a good time, shake it to the right, if you know that you feel fine, shake it to the front, ha, 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 see, yeah, ho, ta. Amazing. <laughs> wow. I would dance. Wow. No. It's not National Dance Day, so you're <laughs> all right. Um, actually, like, the official rules is that I have to sing a verse as well, but I'm not going to do that yeah, anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> but no, it was really good. <coughs> really good, really good. And I think once National Song Day obviously kicks in later on today, Fire. I think this will be... <laughs> no, it's a serious <laughs> thing, honestly. <laughs> They're doing it everywhere. Tokyo, Paris, London. Whatever. Anything for the kids. It's for the kids. You can't say no, because it's for the kids. Well, I gave him more than two verses, so I hope that paid double. That was unbelievable. <laughs> that was unbelievable. I saw, uh, I saw snippets as well of uh, you going to see Anna Woolhouse yeah. and what you did. Because first of all, I was like, in my head, I was thinking, shit, that's what, is that what Anna wears? It is what Anna wears. So, it is. I look yeah, like I know. Her. I didn't know if she would know. I didn't know if she would notice right away, but I actually looked exactly like her. I felt like I did. So when I showed up, she was like, Oh, my God. She knew right away. What did she do, sorry? Oh, my God. Just like that. Is that your, that's your British accent, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Need some work on that. I don't know about that. Sounds pretty perfect to me. No one in England talks like that, Michaela. They seriously. They literally talk like this. They, don't. they talk literally, like... Literally, literally, they talk just like this. Literally. Okay, man. <laughs> I'm going to end this interview right now. Uh, see? That's a cowboy. What? You sound like a cowboy. It's all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same to me. Um, last one. We're going to see the gloves are off with you and... No, not you. You didn't do the gloves are off, did you? No. Why didn't you do the gloves are off again? Well, I don't know. I just got here and they haven't scheduled it or anything. I know that we did the, they did the press conference with um, Clarissa and Savannah. We weren't even announced that we were on the, the co-main event yet. So, um, But there, we did a little something with, with ESPN that should come out fight week. So you'll get a little bit of it. Um, but yeah, no talk as to like a sit down face to face. That's weird. Um, that might be coming. I don't know. Um, right. Okay. Well, listen, Michaela, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Thank you for contributing to National Song Day. You're like the the society will be very happy with uh, with your work. So, yeah. have you got anything else you want to say before we finish? Um, nope. Just tune in Saturday, the September 10th. Uh, like I said, it's not going to disappoint. The hype is real. The rivalries are real. Um, and we're going to fight. It's going to be a fight. That's for sure. So we'll see. If you're not at the O2, which you should be at the O2, um, tune in next Saturday, September 10th. It's an absolutely stacked card with two unbelievable main events. So we'll call it both main events. There's no code, it's two main events on the card. Michaela, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. You coming out? One hell of a fucking story. So stay tuned.